Today on Fire 180, we're going to discuss biblical archaeology. If the Bible were true, wouldn't it be reasonable to assume that archaeology could dig stuff up to prove it? But if you've ever wanted validation for believing the Bible to be more than just legends, you do not want to miss this video. Welcome to Fire 180, where we discuss faith and reason, connecting hearts and minds, and changing attitudes 180 degrees. Today on Fire 180, we're going to be discussing biblical archaeology. If the names, places, and events in the Bible are true, well, wouldn't it be reasonable that there'd be physical evidence that archaeology would be able to prove it? Well, guess what? There's plenty of it. The explosion in archaeology wasn't until the 1800s, but really caught a stride in the 20th century. That said, archaeology has a very long history, but not necessarily in documenting and preserving history, but in the form of grave robbing, selling the booty. You see, real archaeology is not like in the movies as depicted in Indiana Jones fighting Nazis and mummies. Archaeology is the study of anything that can be dug up, filling in the missing pieces in history, attesting to lost cultures of earlier times while reconstructing the past of real people, places, and events. During the past century, there's been numerous discoveries, large and small, of ancient civilizations that authenticate the history written in the Bible. Evidence that correlates ancient secular history with the stories written in both the Old and the New Testaments. Even atheistic archaeologists, when they want to know something specific in ancient history of where to excavate, they often refer to the Bible as a historic reference, especially regarding places that took place in the Bible, which includes Syria, Mesopotamia, which includes modern-day Iraq, Egypt, Turkey, and the Levant, which is modern-day Lebanon and Israel. Archaeology has proven that the people, places, and events written about in the Bible were real, not invented like Hansel and Gretel, Robin Hood, or Jack and the Beanstalk, or places like Oz, Camelot, Mordor, or the Enchanted Forest. Archaeology is a means to determine the truth from the past. It provides a clear understanding of previous cultures, allowing archaeologists to better interpret the past. Archaeology has proven to be the Bible's best friend. There are tons of biblical archaeological finds that I could present, literally hours. But I'm just going to show you the tip of the iceberg here today. So, let's get started. Let's start in the Old Testament. First, the burial plaque of King Uzziah. King Uzziah ruled in the 8th century BC. He's mentioned in 2 Chronicles. It's recorded of him being struck with leprosy later in life. His stone burial plaque was discovered in the Mount of Olives in 1931 and is located in the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. The Tel Dan inscription. This is a 9th century BC stone slab that was discovered in 1993. It is the first historical evidence regarding King David, who reigned over Israel and is referenced in 1 Chronicles. It's inscribed referring to the house of David. The inscription is in the Israel Museum. The Moabite stone is a three-foot slab that was discovered in 1868. It confirms the revolt against Israel that's recorded in 2 Kings against Ahab's family in 850 BC and is on display at the Louvre in Paris. The Obelisk of Shalmaneser. In the 9th century BC, the growing power of Assyria was encroaching on the northern kings. This six and a half foot tall obelisk was discovered in 1846. On it, Jehu, the king of Israel, is shown kneeling as a tribute to the Assyrian king Shalmaneser. The obelisk is in the British Museum in London. The Ein Gedi Scroll is an ancient Hebrew parchment found in 1970 in Israel. Radiocarbon dating testing dates the scroll to the third of the fourth century BC. The scroll was discovered to contain a portion of the book of Leviticus. The scroll is on display at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. Sennacherib's prisms are 7th century BC clay prisms. They describe Sennacherib's siege of Jerusalem during the reign of King Hezekiah, who is recorded in several books in the Old Testament, including Isaiah, Kings, and Chronicles. These three prisms are on display in the British, the Oriental Institute in Chicago, and the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. So how about a few archaeological finds? From the New Testament. First, the Pool of Bethesda. 
The Pool of Bethesda was viewed as a mythical healing pool in Jerusalem, known from the story in the New Testament, John chapter 5, describing multitudes of sick people, such as the blind and lame, waiting to go into the water when it was stirred up. John writes about a man who was paralyzed for 38 years. The man said to Jesus, I have nobody to put me in the pool. Jesus said, rise and take up your bed and walk. There was no clear archaeological evidence that even such a pool existed until an excavation took place in the 19th century. In this dig, they discovered what scholars agree fits all descriptions as the Pool of Bethesda. Further excavation in the area in 1964 uncovered the remains of Byzantine and Crusader churches, as well as other small healing pools. Crucifixion. We hear about the crucifixion and Jesus in the Gospels. And throughout history, crucifixion has been one of the most painful and shameful ways to die. Although it's thought to have originated in Persia, it was the Romans who really perfected it. In 1968, in a cemetery outside of Jerusalem, a Greek archaeologist, Vasilios Tisferis, found the first indisputable remains of a crucified victim. Medical professionals from the Hadassah Medical School in Jerusalem were able to determine that the victim was male with a large spike hammered through his heel, with fragments of olive wood lodged inside. In addition, in a 2019 Forbes magazine article, it provides even more evidence of another crucified victim where a heel was found and discovered in northern Italy. The Pilot Inscription In 1961, a limestone block from the first century was discovered and was believed to be part of a larger inscription dedicating a temple to the Emperor Tiberius. The inscription clearly states Pontius Pilate, Prefect of Judea. And Pontius Pilate is referenced both in John's and Luke's Gospel. The Paulus Boundary Stone Sergius Paulus was the proconsul of Cyprus under the Emperor Claudius before moving to Rome. The stone records his appointment in 47 AD Paulus is mentioned in the book of Acts as residing in Paphos, a city in Cyprus. This is where Paul, accompanied by Barnabas and other companions, converted Paulus to Christianity. The Pool of Siloam. In John chapter 9, Jesus encounters a man born blind. He spits on the ground, makes mud, places on the man's eyes, and told him to go wash in the Pool of Siloam. During construction work in 2004 to repair a water pipe south of Jerusalem's Temple Mount, at the site known as the City of David. Repairmen identified what they thought were two ancient stone steps. Excavation revealed that they were a part of a huge pool from the Second Temple period, the period in which Jesus lived. The structure discovered was 225 feet long. You see, even Jesus prophesied about future biblical archaeology. Luke 19, as he enters Jerusalem, his followers were cheering him on. The Pharisees ordered Jesus to silence them. And Jesus tells them, he says, I tell you, if they were silent, the stones would shout out. In the description of this video, I'm going to list several sources, including a link to the Biblical Archaeology Society's article of 53 people named in the Bible, confirmed by archaeology, as well as links to the Israel Antiquities Authorities, the Israel Museum in Jerusalem, and the British Museum in London. Also, Dr. Gary Rensberg, who is a distinguished professor at Rutgers University in New Jersey and a renowned scholar. He says, quote, the historical realities of the stories written in the Bible have striking parallels in the accepted history told in Egyptian, Persian, Greek, and Hebrew cultures of the time. Also, Dr. James Hoffmeyer, who specializes in Old Testament history and archaeology, he's called upon as a consultant for TV, including the History, Discovery, Learning, and National Geographic channels. In addition, I'll link to far180.com where you can download this PDF for free, as well as I'm going to list many other sources. However, I think that Dr. Joseph Holden sums it up best. He says, quote, Is the Bible mythical? History can become a myth. Myth can become more mythical but myth can never become historical. You see, the Bible has nothing to fear from its faith. The Bible is not a book of legends or myths, but it's a historical document written in tremendous detail about people, dates, events. Biblical archeology span is like breadcrumbs or popcorn that God has left behind for future archeologists to discover. All we need to do is to try to follow his trail. So until next time, when anybody asks you why you're a Christian, the answer is simple, because it's true. The evidence is beyond any reasonable doubt. 
If you've enjoyed today's video, please share. Or if you'd like more people to see it with YouTube's algorithms, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button below and more people will see it. Thank you very much and God bless.